Democrat has now declared a local state of emergency and he is sounding the alarm. Take a listen. There's people having babies down there. There's people collapsing out of the heat. There's people, I mean, there's babies in diapers. They're getting aggressive, frankly so. They've been in the heat day after day after day. And, and it's, it's, it's something that it's very challenging to describe um, in words, but it's extremely chaotic. And again, we're hearing from Border Patrol sources on the ground working the bridge right now that a majority of the migrants coming across into the United States are from Haiti. Why is that concerning? Well, the country of Haiti as a whole only has a COVID-19 vaccination rate of less than 1%. And it sounds like things aren't going to get any better in the short term because both the mayor and local law enforcement say they're getting intel that there are up to 10,000 more migrants currently on the way to Del Rio right now coming through Mexico getting ready to cross over, just like what you saw in that helicopter footage. A remarkable situation out here in Del Rio that's getting worse by the day. Well, we so wouldn't know here. anything about it if it wasn't for you, Bill, and your reporting. And I have to ask, by the way, the Reuters is reporting that the vaccination rate in, in Haiti is now 0.2%, so it's way below that 1%. But uh, the, the administration is trying to black out all of the, the coverage, the drone coverage that we had of what was going on. How did you get up in that helicopter if drones aren't allowed uh, uh, in that airspace? Right, so yesterday the FAA suddenly put out a TFR, which stands for a temporary, temporary flight restriction. They put it right over the bridge, uh, right over the port of entry where we were using our drone to film all that stuff. Uh, the, the order was basically you can't fly anything under a thousand feet, which effectively banned the drones. However, that does not apply to law enforcement. So once that happened, uh, Texas DPS was kind enough to invite us to go up in their helicopter, which again was not subject to that TFR, and we were able to get those remarkable images. But while we were in the helicopter, basically right when we got out, we found out that the FAA has granted Fox News' waiver, and we are now cleared to fly again in that TFR zone. Excellent. So our drones will be up and running again shortly. Good stuff. Bill, tremendous reporting from you for the past 48 hours on all this. I appreciate your reporting. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, here now is Tom Holman, former acting ICE director and Fox Business contributor. Uh, Tom, we heard the Democratic mayor of Del Rio uh, saying that this is a humanitarian crisis. Uh, President Biden has said before that the reason he didn't follow the Trump advice and on immigration, which had cut uh, immigration tremendously, was because it was not humanitarian. Clearly, the situation here is is very unhumanitarian nothing human and it's now a national security crisis right absolutely look more people have died under the biden administration trying to cross this border than under president trump more women are being raped the cartels are making more money uh thousands of covid cases have been released in the country and the, the, the conditions of of that area down there is the most inhumane i've seen in my entire career so the Biden, you know, where's the AOC? Where's the rest of the progressives that ran down on the Trump administration crying about the, the conditions these people are in? This is a far worse conditions than ever was under President Trump. So look, I'm disgusted, I'm disgusted that the President of the United States still hasn't been to the border. This is the Vice President went to El Paso, a long ways away from the epicenter. And the, and the Secretary of Homeland Security says the border is closed and secure. He needs to be removed. He has failed. He knows how to stop this crisis because he was there in 14, 15. I met with him numerous times. We stopped the crisis in 15. He knows how to stop it. He refuses to stop it because he fell into the progressive left open borders agenda. It's disgusting. Well, we have a national security crisis because we don't know now since it's totally open and the border border agents are not there to, to check these people in. There, there are thousands of them that are just waiting for somebody to check them in, but they're not being checked in. They could, there could be some bad, very bad folks sneaking in here. You also have Title 42 of the public health law, 42, which is supposed to specify uh, that nobody gets in with COVID. We have no way of knowing how many of these people have COVID. As Bill mentioned, a lot of them are from Haiti, which has virtually zero vaccination rates. Uh, so I mean, there's so many levels on which this has now become a national security crisis. Look, we can agree it's a humanitarian crisis. The video shows it. We can agree it's an immigration crisis because the, the thousands are coming across every day. But you're right. It's a public health crisis because we know right now the data shows 18 to 20 percent of these migrants have COVID when they come across the border and they're being released. We know that 90,000 people have 
overdose on fentanyl in this country, and DEA says 95% of that fentanyl is coming across the southwest border because half the border patrol is no longer on line. And finally, a national security crisis. Border patrols have arrested nine people on the terrorist watch list. Excuse me, 11 people on the terrorist screening database. 11 they've arrested. Terrorists don't want to be arrested. They're going to try to sneak around. 350,000 people have got away. That's based on camera traffic, drone traffic, and, and sensor traffic that Border Patrol couldn't respond to because they're busy with a family unit. 350,000. How many of them were on the terrorist watch list? With thousands of, of, of terrorists have been released from Afghanistan in prisons whose sole yeah. purpose in life is to destroy this country. The southwest border right now is vulnerable to terrorists entering this country, and I want to know how many of that 350,000 have come here to do us harm. If we don't know, but we're going to find out, David. Tom, let's let's not forget the Border Patrol agents uh, and, and the trouble that they are having, not only in dealing with this, this massive amount of, of migration that they just can't, there aren't enough agents to deal with it, but there are border agents dying of COVID, and I've seen the numbers. There is a huge spike in the number of border patrol agents getting COVID and dying of it. Now, I know we, there are other people, other reasons why people can get COVID in this country, but you have to think that some of that is because of the work they're doing with the migrants. Their commander in chief put them in harm's way. They're already in harm's way. But if they would have followed the Trump administration, Title 42, keep these people south, all of them, not releasing most of the families, not releasing all the UACs, there would be a lot less COVID. And let me tell you, the men and women of the border patrol, they're walking around like zombies, they're overworked. They've been abandoned by their president. They've been abandoned by the Secretary of Homeland Security. These are patriots. I love each and every one of them. But we, that this administration, have ignored them and put them at yeah. great risk. That, and, 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 well, and, not just ignored them, help. Tom. They've yeah. insulted them. They've called it. You know, we should also remember when you look at the the, the number of, of agents that have died in active duty, you see a lot of uh, Hispanic surnames as a result of of them them going out the, the the charge that they are they are racist has been made by certain real extremists like the aocs and others which is just not true tom i'm so sorry but we we've got to move on there's a lot of breaking news today but i thank you very much you uh for being here with us here now is, is stephen hayes he is co-founder ceo and editor of the news publication the dispatch he joins us now stephen how much longer can the administration avoid the fact that there is this crisis going on? We now have a totally open border in that part of our southern border. Yeah, not much longer. I think the, the common sense answer would be, but we'll see is probably the right answer. Look, this is not new. You know, we've had this surge in the Del Rio region in particular dating back several months, and the administration hasn't taken it as uh, an urgent matter. I think this is consistent with what we've seen from the administration broadly on the border. Uh, you know, they had indications earlier that there would be a surge across the border, across the southern border. Uh, you had this question put to the top advisor, uh, Vice President Biden, both on national security terms and on domestic policy terms. And they basically shrugged their shoulders. They don't have a plan. And I think we're seeing the results of what not having a plan means. Well, and we also see now the overlap with our, our concerns, everybody's concerns about COVID because of the fact that a lot of these people are have COVID, uh, 10 to 20% of them uh, are infected in some way. There are no vaccinations in, in Haiti, virtually 0.2% of the Haitian population is vaccinated according to Reuters. Uh, and, and, and yet here's what, uh, Jen Psaki said to our own Peter Ducey the other day about concern showing virtually no concern about what's happening with COVID at the southern border. Roll tape. We want everybody to get vaccinated and more people are vaccinated, whether they are migrants or whether they are workers, protects more people in the United States. What is the requirement for people at a business with more than 100 people? It is not a requirement for migrants at the southern border. Why? That's correct. Go ahead. So that's correct, a virtual no answer, but she did answer the fact that it's correct that there are no requirements at the border for, for vaccinations or concerns about vaccinations. Yeah, glaring double standard. I mean, the administration is talking out of both sides of its mouth on this, talking about COVID and the spread of COVID, particularly the Delta variant, as a crisis that requires some rather creative uh, lawmaking, rulemaking by the administration and, and OSHA on the one hand, and then on the other hand, that shrug of the shoulders. I mean, I thought that was a pretty extraordinary moment from Jen Psaki, a virtual shrug of the shoulders yeah. about the possibility that so many migrants could be coming in 
with COVID. You know, even David, even, even if you're sympathetic with the plight of some of these migrants, I mean, the people in Del Rio are overwhelmingly Haitian. They've been through natural disasters in the last several months. They've got a government that's collapsing. I'm very sympathetic with their eagerness to get to the United States. But this is, as you pointed out in your last interview, this is not a humanitarian situation down there now because of a not lack of preparation, a lack of understanding what's happening. And we simply have to have some control on our board. There is zero control. You see them walking back when they right. when it's time to buy groceries. They just walk back to Mexico and walk back to that underpass. Uh, there's nobody stopping them in either direction. It's it's totally out of control. Very quickly, Stephen, I got to ask you about the FDA because again, their their lack of concern about science with regard to the immigrants care bringing COVID into the United States seems to, to parallel with what's going on with the FDA now. They want, the administration says we have to have boosters. Uh, the FDA said no, a couple of their top scientists were quit as a result of their, their problems with the administration on this. And they're still at loggerheads with the FDA over this decision. 